what's cocktail hour without cocktails? Today, we're walking through everything you need to know to set up a beer and wine bar for your wedding, your rehearsal dinner, or any other event you host. That's coming up next on the Wedding Planning Podcast. Hey there, it's Kara, and I believe that every engaged couple deserves the expertise of a down-to-earth, honest, and professional wedding planner. Join me each week on the Wedding Planning Podcast for straightforward advice designed to streamline and simplify your wedding plans. Are you ready to ditch the crushing wedding overwhelm and expense felt by so many engaged couples? To sign up for a free three-day trial of my revolutionary digital wedding planning package, visit weddingplanningpodcast.co slash vault. That's V-A-U-L-T. There's no promo code required for the free trial, and I can't wait to see you there. Enjoy the show. Today we're going to get started by talking about the drinks and the bar. I'm going to share some very specific ways to set yourself up for success with regards to not only planning and budgeting, but also going out and doing the actual shopping preparing, and then of course, serving. So let's dive in to the drinks. The savings that you will benefit from in supplying your own bar are amazing. (laughs) If your venue will allow you to bring in your own beer, wine, and or liquor, then I beg you to consider this a top priority. For those of you who have not finalized a venue yet as you're shopping around, this is a really valuable question to ask the venues that you're visiting. If you are able to supply your own bar, your own beer, your own wine, your own liquor, individual venues may have specific restrictions. They may let you do beer and wine only, but not liquor. So ask these questions as you're shopping around. If you come you know, come down to two different venues and you like them both equally and on the surface, they're more or less the same. One will let you stock your own bar, the other will not. I would always go with stocking your own bar. And I'll say now, this applies to all the things we're going to cover over the next couple of shows. If the thought of you personally handling this is completely overwhelming and just out of the question, then you can always consider delegating it to someone else. The bar is a perfect item to hand over all the control to your fiance or to another friend or a family member who loves cocktails or is a wine connoisseur. My now husband, John, did the same thing for our wedding, and I have dozens of friends who have taken advantage of a BYO or a DIY style bar. All right, are you sold? If so, the first step that you're going to need to take here is to decide with your fiance what you're going to serve at your bar. You could choose to do beer and wine only. You could add in a signature cocktail or two, or you could go full blown all out and serve beer, wine, and liquor for mixed drinks. And naturally, I know that there are couples who will opt for no alcohol to be served at all. And of course, what we're discussing today applies to non-alcoholic selections as well. Let's start with beer and wine only. I really like this option for a couple of reasons. It's very simple. Cutting out liquor, mixers, and drink accessories, garnishes like limes, cherries, umbrellas, oranges, and not to mention the added work for your bartender is really a huge benefit. And I just thought of this actually right now, ice is another big one. So using ice in your mixed drinks, you're going to need to pre-plan for all that ice to be there to somehow keep it cold, to have extra coolers, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. With just beer and wine only, you're not going to be dealing with those other challenges. Also, a bar that's serving just beer and wine is going to move a lot quicker than if your bartenders are fielding custom drink orders and mixing those drinks. So it's much quicker to pour a glass of wine or pop open the cap of a bottle of beer, hand it to your guests, they're on their way, the next person comes and orders. It's also, generally speaking, going to be much more affordable to choose a couple of beers 
and a couple of types of wine. And then you're also less likely to deal with leftovers than if you're trying to identify all the kinds of liquor that everyone is going to want to drink. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that towards the end of the show. So again, generally less expensive to just stick with beer and wine. If you want to add a little bit of variety, but you still want to shy away from a full bar, you could always consider adding a signature pre-mixed cocktail or a couple of them to the menu. These pre-made cocktails can be made in advance and served punch style, so it's easy. Sangria is also a great option here, and I'll put up a link to my personal favorite sangria recipe in the show notes. If that's something you'd like to explore more, you can take a look down at the show notes when you have a hands-free moment. All right, so you're sold on doing your own wedding day bar. The big question now is how on earth do you go about calculating how much 50, 100 people or more are actually going to drink? The good news here is that there are a bunch of online drink calculator tools to the rescue, and these will help you determine exactly how much beer, wine, liquor, and mixers that you'll need to have on hand. I'll link up to a drink calculator in today's show notes. You can take a peek down whenever you have a hands-free moment for more info on that. So an online drink calculator will go a very long way in planning and budgeting for the bar. Essentially how it works is you enter the number of guests you're expecting, whether they are heavy, moderate, or light drinkers, and then it's going to take the guesswork out of how much you actually need to go out and buy. And as promised, I do want to share with you a few very important things to consider before you head out shopping for your bar. My husband, John, and I saved thousands of dollars in stocking our own bar. I have no doubt about that. But there are some very important challenges and things to be aware of and be on the lookout for. The first important thing to consider is ask the store that you purchase from what their return policy is. In some states, it's actually not legal for stores to accept alcohol returns. That may or may not be the case where you are, but it definitely doesn't hurt to ask the question. This way, if you end up with three extra cases of beer or wine that you and your fiance will never drink, Um, If you can return the unopened bottles, then that's certainly a bonus. A bonus, but not a deal breaker. So unopened bottles will make great gifts for your families, for your wedding party. And if there's anyone else who you'd like to say thank you to for their help at the wedding, um, that is a really easy and a really nice thank you gift. The second very important thing to keep in mind is consider buying a little bit more than what your drink calculator tells you to. This would have saved John and I a ton of trouble on our wedding day. So we made a couple of mistakes and I'll outline them. But to begin with, we completely underestimated how much vodka people would drink. And I feel like that could have been totally avoided. This is hindsight is 2020. So this is why I'm sharing this with you. Hopefully you will not run into the same challenges that we faced. So to go into some detail here, we knew, we knew this, we knew it for years that his friends essentially only drank vodka and we should have bought more. We made a point of having every single top shelf liquor option you could imagine. And pretty much everyone at our wedding who was drinking cocktails was drinking vodka based drinks. As a result of this, we have groomsmen ending up hailing cabs. This is before the Uber and Lyft days. So they were calling cabs to come up to our wedding venue and pick them up and take them to the store to buy more vodka. So just a completely ridiculous situation. We had bottles of expensive scotch, tequila, and rum that went essentially untouched. And just the vodka was the hit of the night. So the lesson here is twofold. The first thing 
take a look at your guest list and by all means use that online drink calculator that I mentioned earlier, but also just rely on your personal firsthand knowledge and rely on your instinct of how much and what you know your guests will prefer to drink. If that online drink calculator is suggesting that you have a case of red wine on hand, but you know intimately that nobody in your family or your partner's family drinks red wine, and you really don't think anyone else does either, then scale it back. So do you can make adjustments there based on your instinct. Hello from Susan's Travel Services. Susan and her team know that these are unique and changing times and they are here for you and walking beside you. Susan's Travel Services is a full service travel agency that's been in business for 26 years. A note from Susan, We've gone through difficult times before, and we will walk with you through this. Susan is busy booking trips into 2022 and can't wait to start your journey with you. The best part? Susan's honeymoon planning services are free. That's right. There is no charge for all of their knowledge, services, and expertise. Susan simply wants to build a meaningful relationship with you and your partner to make your dream honeymoon come true. Email Susan and tell her you heard this ad and get $50 off your honeymoon. Tell a friend and get a $50 referral fee if they mention your name at the time of booking. Email Susan at Susan'sTravelServices.com for free honeymoon planning services and get $50 off when you book with Susan and her team. Researching and planning an entire wedding in the midst of everything else going on in your life can be a really stressful time. And if you find your happiness is suffering, BetterHelp is here for you. BetterHelp will assess your individual needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. Send a message to your counselor anytime and receive a thoughtful, timely response. You can even schedule weekly video or phone sessions, all without ever having to sit in an uncomfortable waiting room. Licensed professional counselors specialize in depression, stress, anxiety, relationships, anger, family conflicts, and more. BetterHelp is committed to partnering you with your perfect therapeutic match, so they make it easy and free to change counselors if needed. In fact, so many people have been using BetterHelp that they are recruiting counselors in all 50 states. I want you to start living a happier life today. As a listener, you'll get 10% off your first month by visiting BetterHelp.com dot com slash wedding. Join over 1 million people taking charge of their mental health. Again, that's better help H E L P dot com slash wedding. And then the second lesson is that keeping it simple is almost always the best route to go. In our case, we could have done beer, wine, and vodka and would have been totally set. Instead, we ended up spending a lot of unnecessary money on fancy booze that nobody drank. And we could have saved a ton of trouble by just keeping things more simple, more streamlined, and serving the three things that everybody ended up drinking and skipping the expense and the hassle of the rest. Okay, so to wrap up that rather broad point, consider buying a little bit more or less than your drink calculator tells you to of any specific type. Okay, the next thing to be aware of is who will actually be serving the drinks on the wedding day. This isn't so much a huge deal with just a beer and wine bar, but if you're considering doing a full bar, you will really want to have skilled, trustworthy bartenders who are pouring those drinks. For John and I's wedding, we hired a team of people online as our servers. So there were five of them, and between the five of them, they were going to be responsible for manning the bars and serving the meal and picking up, etc. Now, although they did the job we paid them for, they were definitely not dedicated professional bartenders, and that was very evident. (laughs) Back to my vodka story about how we ran out, 
I personally stand by thinking that they're, they were pouring very, very strong drinks. And I'm personally of the notion that that heavy pouring was partially responsible for us running out of vodka. I do think we should have just bought more vodka, but I think that the problem we had with running out so early could have been mitigated had those bartenders had more of a handle on what was going on. I think the supply could have been managed a little bit better. And then a side note here with hiring professional bartenders will be ideal. Um, But whoever it is that you're hiring, make sure that they have a full understanding of where everything is and also what extras you want to be sure are included in or with the drinks that they're pouring. It would be very helpful to prepare a full list of all the garnishes that you're going to be furnishing, of any extra cocktail napkins that you want handed out, a location of where everything is, where are the extra cases of wine, where is extra ice, where are extra garnishes, and then what the course of action should be if you run out of anything. So that they have a heads up and an idea of what's going on. A professional bartender should have a handle on that, but if someone who you're hiring like we did is a server who's just kind of moonlighting that night as a bartender, then make sure they have like a detailed outline of where things are and some kind of suggested courses of action should they need to think on their toes. A couple of tangible examples of how this can go wrong Um, Our servers slash bartenders at John and I's wedding didn't hand out any of the personalized cocktail napkins that we had made. And this was, (laughs) in hindsight, I laugh about it because it sounds kind of silly, but this was a huge deal to me. I was beyond peeved and annoyed and upset that none of those napkins went out because Oh, God, I'm like embarrassed to admit how much time and effort and energy I put into designing those napkins and making sure they were the perfect color, the perfect script. I paid extra for gold foil. So I was totally annoyed that they did not put out any of our napkins. And side note, to this day, we have a box of those napkins in our garage because I can't bear to get rid of them. But what on earth are we ever going to do with 200 cocktail napkins with our wedding date engraved on them? I don't know, but I can't bear to part with them. So lesson learned there. Um, Another example, I just heard from a listener and she went to the trouble of cutting oranges to be served with wheat beer, right? So you have a blue moon beer, you put a slice of orange in it. And they did a bunch of other garnishes and their staff did not even touch them. And on top of it, they, the bartenders at her wedding, they also didn't hand out the custom koozies that the couple had made for their guests. And then last thing here, uh, John and I had backup cases of wine and champagne that were in the kitchen. And we learned after the fact that people were told there was no more champagne to serve when in fact there were dozens of unopened bottles back in the kitchen. The staff just wasn't clear on where they were or didn't know they were there. So making a list for your bartenders ahead of time will be very, very helpful in making sure that none of these things happen to you. (laughs) Okay, and the next very important piece of advice that I want to share with you is to make sure and price shop around before you commit to buying all of this booze. Many stores will offer a discount per bottle when you buy six bottles or more of beer. I'm sorry, not probably not beer, definitely wine and liquor. So a lot of the big grocery stores will offer that six bottle discount. So the price per bottle, of course, can vary greatly from store to store. I feel very strongly that it's definitely worth your time to spend a few hours or a half a day visiting a couple of different stores, and that includes your favorite warehouse store like Costco or Sam's Club, and compare the prices before you commit to purchasing. 
Warehouse stores can have amazing deals on beer, wine, and liquor. Their cases of beer are priced much better than you'll find at the grocery store. And two of my very favorite wines are $7 or less at Costco. And I know from firsthand experience, again, that same bottle of wine is at least double that price at our local grocery store. So it will definitely pay off for you to price shop around and make sure you're getting the best deal on the beer, the wine, the liquor, and the mixers that you're going to be purchasing. And with that, I'll let you go for the day. If you have any stories or questions you'd like to share about the bar or the appetizer menus we reviewed last week, you can always find me on Instagram at Wedding Planning Podcast or on our website by visiting weddingplanningpodcast.co slash contact. As always, sending my best wishes to you and your fiance, and I definitely think it's time for a cocktail cheers until next time. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of the Wedding Planning Podcast. For a list of any links and resources called out in today's show, take a peek at the show notes in your podcast player whenever you have a hands-free moment. You can also subscribe to receive convenient show recaps via email by visiting weddingplanningpodcast.co. While you're there, you can browse a library of all past episodes and view special offers from our sponsors. That website again is weddingplanningpodcast.co. Thank you so much for including me and the Wedding Planning Podcast in your wedding plans. And I'll talk to you again next week, same time, same place.